Hey guys, this is the blend tool. So the keyboard shortcut is W. I have no idea why. But that brings up the tool. And then another keyboard shortcut is Command Option B. That will create a blend with any objects that you have currently selected. So if we move over, I'll show you how the tool works. So hit W, grab your two shapes that you want to blend, and you just click one and then the other. I don't have to hold Command or Shift or anything. You just, you just click in order of the objects you want to blend and it creates these steps. So this is a live blend tool. So these shapes that are being drawn in in between my shapes are not editable currently, but I can still edit these shapes. I can move, I can scale, I can grab points and change the shape itself. And everything I do, it'll just redraw those blend objects. If I need these intermittent shapes for some artwork I'm doing, then I can go up to Object, Expand, or Object, Blend, Expand, and it'll outline those. Now I can grab this shape, I can restyle it, and use it for whatever I need. So the other thing you can do, if I just get rid of this blend, so it gives you this blend path, I can just delete that. Um, if I, well here, I'll draw another shape, change the color. So the blend tool will blend color as well, and you can have more than two objects. So I'm going to click on my first object, click on my second, and click on my third. And you'll see it blends the color and it blends this shape into this shape and then into this third shape. So you can have as many objects as you want. Typically I, I rarely use more than two or three objects for a blend. It gets really complicated. and. In, Maybe you have something that you need to blend 10 different shapes into each other, but I never have that need. But anyway, so what you can do also, you'll notice I have this square pretty close to this circle. And so it, it appears that there are a lot more blends up here than there are down here, just because it's so much closer together. Really, there's just three in between. But if you are more concerned with the spacing between each step being consistent, you can change from specified steps to specified distance and just increase that number to where you like it. So now you see there's only two steps between the circle and the square and there's like six or seven between the square and the squiggle. And so that's because it's just taking distance into account. Every 10 steps it drops in a new, a, uh, new blended shape where it needs to. And then I might as well show that right now. So you can also change to smooth color. If I hit preview, it'll show you. So then it blends as smooth as it needs to based on how different those colors are and how many steps it needs to, to add to give you that smooth blend. So one problem that I run into often with blends is if I just select these, hit Command Option B. So notice it's not creating smooth steps like it should. And if I add a few steps in here, you can see maybe better what's going on here. I'll just add a lot. So you can see it's blending the right vertex to the left vertex. And the reason is these objects are, are the paths are faith, facing different directions essentially. So one path was drawn left to right, another was drawn right to left. And so it's blending first vertex with last vertex. Easy way to fix that in something like this is to just rotate it 180 degrees, but that doesn't work if you have like a little smiley face. So now it's still blending backwards, but if I go to flip it, now I have a frown. So if, if you have this object and you can't rotate it, and you know, maybe, sometimes it's just too intricate to to redraw. I mean, this I could obviously just grab it and convert it back into my smiley face. But sometimes you have a very specific piece of art that you can't just redraw by hand like that. You can't eyeball it. And it may just not be worth the time. So what you can do is click that path, go to object, blend, or uh, excuse me, path, and reverse path direction. So you didn't have to edit that path itself. It just said, instead of this being the last vertex, now it's the first and this is the last. So now they are facing the same direction and it gives you a smooth blend. 
So blends, you can also blend groups. And so I'll just show a, a slight issue. If I wanted to blend the green object to the green object, the pink to the pink, and the blue to the blue, it's not doing that. And that is because the order of these shapes matters. So if I pull open these two groups, you can see in this group, my green circle is the back object and the pink is the top. But in this group, the pink is the middle and the green is in front of the pink. So if I just move that to the back, now the order is consistent. Pink is in front, blue is in middle, and green is in back. Now it'll blend the appropriate objects. So just remember, order matters when you're blending groups. Um, and so it's an easy fix if you know what to look for. So back to that blend path that's created. So I'll show you that again. If I just blend these together and then I'll get rid of the blend, I'm left with this path. So what I can do before I get rid of that blend, I can actually grab that path and curve it. And so this is the path that the blend will follow. So you can actually use an existing curve. It just can't have an appearance. So if you get rid of the fill and the stroke, and then select the object you want to blend, hit Command Option B, and it'll blend along that path. And then you can go in and you can add steps. You can say smooth color. And, and this is still editable. You can change the color of this shape. You can change the shape of the shape. Uh, if I move this shape, <clears throat> excuse me, if I move this shape, it'll move the anchor point attached to it, which is just this one anchor point. I can edit these individual anchor points and it won't affect my shapes, but if I move one of the main shapes, it'll move the end point of the blend path that it's attached to. So it's, it's almost like a, a one-off brush blending from this shape to this shape. You can apply it along a path the same way a brush is applied. Um, so another quick trick that I uh, will do sometimes for you know simple illustrations so imagine this is a little radio dial. If I want to add some grooves to this and add some depth, what I can do is I'll just copy this shape and I'm going to change this to blue for now just so I can see what's going on. I'll copy these as well, change those to blue. So I want to blend this line to this line to give me those grooves, but Oh, and see, I need to reverse path direction on this. So you can see it's not, it's not looking so good so far. It doesn't fit in with this shape, so it's not following the curve of this shape, and it's too equally spaced. If you look at a dial, because of the perspective of it, there will be more lines or more ridges at the top and the bottom than in the middle. So, I'll delete that blend. Now if I get rid of the stroke on this path, and then I select these two and hit Command Option B, it'll blend those two strokes along the path. So now I can drag this over and reposition it. So now it's blending along the curve, and it's, you can't really see it because there's not enough um, steps being added yet but you can see it's more dense up at the top and I'll just add more steps so you can see that. I'll go to 10 and then if I deselect this blend stroke I can change my stroke weight. So now you can see a little bit better. It's very subtle but it's details like that that they can add a lot of dimension to an illustration and if you can do it in three seconds like that then why not? So that's the blend tool. I hope I covered everything. If I forgot something or if you know a trick that I don't know, I would love to hear about it. So please comment on this video or you can comment us at Level Labs on Instagram. I'd love to see what you're working on. And like I said, I'd love to learn a new trick about the blend tool. So thanks for watching, you guys.